Good day and welcome. I'm so happy to be with you today. I'm broadcasting from Vancouver, British Columbia, and I hope that wherever you are in the world, you're learning and co-elevating with people in your industry. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about creating and managing virtual teams, and perhaps you've been engaged with virtual teams or remote workers or distributive workforce, as the terms may be known, before, but perhaps this is new to you, and perhaps this is something that's been caused by the recent pandemic and the controls that have been put in place to keep us all safe. So let's just explore the future of work and what this means to us today. I want to take you back, first of all, to 1999. This was when I first started to create virtual work teams, and this was when we had another unknown ahead of us, it was called Y2K, for those of you who remember, which turned out to be a big fuss about nothing. So it's not really like today, but we were still charting unknown waters and getting ready for something that we didn't know what was it was going to look like. So in those days, there was very little in the way of technology to support remote working. That's one of the things that we have that's different today. So thank goodness for technology. Let's embrace it and make it you work for us as we strive to engage remote workers and set up people to work remotely. Some of the things that have already been impacting the future of work have been digital transformation. So the digital transformation has been really driving a lot of change in the way people work already with cloud-based software, cloud storage and digital file management, uh, voice over internet. A lot of these things and video calling have already been in place. So we can use these technologies to push out and really engage with workers and work better remotely today. Globalization is another factor that has created this distributive workforce. So we can now bring team members on board from just about anywhere in the world and work collaboratively. That does bring its challenges as well. And so we may talk a little bit about that. Demographic changes as well. So the younger workforce entering the workforce today has different ideals and goals, and they align a little bit differently with the workforce than perhaps the traditional workforce in the past that we've been used to. And of course, we can't go without talking about the global crisis, which today is a pandemic, which is really impacting the way people work. And it's probably going to change some of our habits and the way we work in the future. So what is the biggest challenge to working remotely? I believe, it's communication. It's really not much different than working physically together. If there are already communication problems in the organization, they are going to be magnified during this type of a crisis. So we want to take care of those communication problems and work effectively. Working remotely, the majority of your communication is going to be written. While we do have the opportunity to do video calls, we can't be on video calls eight hours a day or the full working day. So your written communications, one of the challenges with those is that they don't have emotion with them. So if you were talking to somebody in person, they would be able to read your body language, they would be able to see uh, the reaction on your face, maybe your gestures, those kinds of things are missing in an email or a written communication. And so people sometimes want to attach their own emotion to that written communication, which might not be aligned with what your message intended in the first place. So we have to be really clear in our communications. There's also two sides to a conversation. And we have to remember that when we're working remotely, we have to give time for somebody to respond. And we can't just have one way communication. So we have to give the opportunity to people to respond, to engage, collaborate, even if it's in an online workplace. And let's not use this example that I'm showing you of a screenshot of somebody who was working remotely and had the challenge of actually being faced with having a collaborative workspace where nobody else was going to be present. We also have to be careful about the pitfalls of muting our remote workforce, not giving them opportunities to give feedback, to have input and to feel valued. This unfortunate screenshot that I'm sharing with you is an actual example of a remote worker who was on a conference call on mute for almost five hours. Can you believe it? 
So don't fall into that trap of trying to feed information down the pipeline and have your remote workers connected with you while you provide information or try to collaborate in that kind of an environment because it's just not productive and it's not engaging. You can imagine the frustration and also the lack, the lack of engagement that would perhaps lead to multitasking or just indifference about your message. So we have to be careful about what kind of communication we conduct, how we conduct it, and what the duration of these kinds of collaborations or calls are. One of the other aspects of remote working is really trying to replicate, if possible, the experience that you would have in a physical environment. Let me give you an example. We hold meetings on Zoom, sometimes team meetings, and when we started those meetings uh, as, as video calls, the first part of the meeting tended to be a social interaction, people catching up with each other and just finding out how everybody's doing. So we realized quickly that for those who wanted to be on purpose and on time, that may have been a little bit of a waste of time or unproductive time for the company. So now what we've done is we've created those opportunities for people to log in early. So we have a host start the meeting maybe 15 or 20 minutes early, allowing people to join early and have those social interactions and kind of what we call the water cooler time before the meeting starts. That means that the meeting starts on time and those people who don't want to socialize can just join on time and the meeting gets started on time. It's much more productive. It also allows for that time for people to connect early. What we find in that environment is that people do show up for the meeting on time rather than maybe checking in late because they think, well, it's just gonna be a social gathering anyway for the first few minutes. It doesn't matter if I'm late. Another thing about that setting the tone is how you show up as a leader. How do you show up? Are you showing up professionally? Are you showing up on purpose? Do you have an agenda for your meeting? Uh, do you dress professionally? Do you have a professional background for your call? Those are all things that are important because as a leader, you set the tone for the team and they will respond accordingly. There are many tools available for you to engage with. Those, I'm not going to go into great detail about all those tools because you can easily search online for tools to engage with remote workers, but you can be familiar probably with things like Slack, with Zoom, with Google Hangouts, Skype, WeChat, and WhatsApp. For example, we've been using WeChat for uh, several years now to communicate with our teams in China, and it's a platform that they're very conversant with. We can have video calls, we can transfer documents, um, have quick text messaging, and of course the generous sprinkling of emojis uh, it makes for a very engaging kind of a collaboration with our team. So there are many, uh, many technology tools out there. I want to just uh, mention, just using Zoom, uh, we have been able to collaborate, uh, get a little bit fancier with uh, virtual backgrounds. And one thing that I do want to mention about video calling though, is that when you have remote workers on video, they're calling in from their home. That's their personal space and we need to respect that. Um, if people are uncomfortable with having uh, their background showing, perhaps encourage them to use a virtual background. But I do think that there are some really great benefits of having the, the webcam turned on so that you have better engagement. But just remember that Zoom calls should be limited or video calls should be limited because you're actually invading this per the personal space so we have to be cognizant of that and just use our, our best judgment in how we operate and, and have those meetings. Another thing that we like to see is sometimes just having a happy hour. So bring your team together for maybe 30 minutes as a happy hour where there is no structured agenda and people just get to talk or I've even seen uh, some teams play games online using an online gaming software and collaborate that way as for happy hour. So there's some great opportunities for you to engage and just do those things that you would normally do in a physical environment, but just do them online. What do remote workers need? They need visibility. That is one of the main things that they do need because they're now 
they're not visible to you. They're not visible to the rest of the team. And so find ways to make them visible, whether it's giving them an item on an agenda for a meeting to report on or giving them praise on a, on a video call with the team. Uh, give visibility to people, give them projects. Another thing that they want is accountability and that accountability really comes with visibility. So holding them accountable and giving them opportunities to meet targets and set goals. Self-motivation is also something that's important, but really self-motivation comes from an environment that encourages people to feel motivated. So think of ways that you can do that to motivate people and also feeling valued. Remote workers want to feel, feel valued. And so anytime that you can call them out and recognize them in public, either on a newsletter, uh, feature them on a video call, something like that, that is really a good way to help them feel valued. They also want a social connection. And I mentioned that happy hour. Um, you can do some pretty cool things on that happy hour. Uh, to give them that social connection that they might be missing out on because they're not getting it even after hours. They may not be getting that uh, social connection. So uh, reach out to, to your teammates and help them feel like they're socially connected. The final thought I have for you today, folks, is just co-elevation. I call it co-elevation because it's each one of us. And through this program today, we're actually co-elevating. We're actually reaching out to our industry we're reaching out to our colleagues, coworkers around the world, and we're working in ways that we can improve the life of remote workers, improve our organizations. And if there's anything in this whole global crisis that might be a silver lining, it's the fact that it can bring us closer together, even though we are apart, closer together to really co-elevate, draw on our internal resources and the expertise in our teams to really get better at what we do and drive that connection. Use technology, but keep it human. And folks, we're in it together. So thank you very much for attending today.